Hi friends, welcome to Abhi Tutorials. In this lesson, I will be covering exception handling in Python. Before trying to understand exception handling, let's see what an exception is. An exception is an unanticipated or an unexpected event that happens during the execution or the runtime of the program. When exceptions occur, the program flow is interrupted and the execution of the program gets terminated before it is fully completed. There are two types of exceptions in Python, the built-in exceptions and the user-defined or custom exceptions. Built-in exceptions comes with the Python programming language. User-defined exceptions are created by you as a Python programmer. There are two built-in classes which you should know regarding exceptions. They are the base exception and the exception classes. Python documentation states all exceptions that are there in Python must to be instance of a class that derive from a class named base exception. There is another class named exception which is a child class of base exception. It is recommended to use the exception class or its children as the parent class when you create a new user defined exception. Given here are few examples of built in exceptions in Python. For a full list of exceptions, please refer the given link. Exception occurs when something that could not be handled occurs. For example, if we write a program to read a file, but if the file doesn't exist in the system, then we get the file not found error, which is an exception. Similarly, if we try to divide any number by zero, we will get zero division error exception and so on. Now that we have seen what an exception is and its types, let's now try to understand exception handling. Exception handling is an approach to handle exceptions so that there is minimum impact whenever an exception occurs. If you provide appropriate exception handling functionality to your code, then whenever an exception occurs, it will be handled gracefully and your program will never get interrupted intermittently. Instead, the execution continues after the exception handling part of the code. There are two important blocks you will use for exception handling. They are the try and the accept blocks. If you think that if any piece of code is going to return an exception, then you should put the specific code within the try block. And the accept block will contain the exception handling code. Let's now see an example for a very simple exception handling code in Python. Consider a simple program where we have a variable named a and we have assigned it the expression phi by zero. The second line of the program consists of a print statement with hello world. Let's now run the program. When we run the program, we will get an error as highlighted here and more specifically the zero division error that has occurred in line 1 due to the exception that has occurred in line 1. The second line of the program is which has the print statement is never executed since the program has entered abruptly. Now we know that there is a possibility of exception in line 1. We can enclose the line 1 within a try block. And we will add the handler code within the accept block as given here. The print statement with hello world remains outside the try and the accept block. Run the program again. And you will be able to see the program executed completely printing the hello world as well without any abrupt ends. This happens since we have enclosed the exception causing code within the try and accept block. One concern with this approach is, in case of bigger programs, we will not know what type of exception is being returned, whether it's a zero division exception or a file not found exception. We just have a statement called exception handled here. To display the type of exception that is returned by the code, we have to add an exception class name, suffixing the accept block and add an alias to the exception. Here I have aliased the exception class as E. 
Then in the next line, you can add the alias enclosed within a str function to print what type of exception it is. Instead of enclosing the e within the str function, you can also use the e.args of zero attribute of the e object. Let's run the program now. We will be able to see now what type of exception it is using the code. This type of exception handling is known as generic exception handling. Since this works for any type of exceptions that occur in the program and we have specifically not mentioned any exception subclasses in the except block. Instead of permitting the generic exception to handle the exceptions, you can suffix the specific exception classes next to the except block so that the specific exception conditions can be handled. In the example given here, I have given an additional except block that handles the zero division error if it occurs. Run the program now and you will be able to see the zero division error is displayed as part of the except block that specifically handles the zero division error. The generic exception handler doesn't get any exception to handle since it's already handled by the previous exception handler. And the final print statement of the program is executed successfully since the exceptions are handled appropriately in previous steps. So far we have seen what and all we can do with the try and except blocks. There is yet another block which comes along with the try block called finally. Code written in the finally block runs regardless of whether an exception occurred in a program or not. The finally block is generally used to close the objects that are open and to free up system resources. Let's now see an example of how the finally block works. Consider a program where you have a try block with an exception causing code. Also note that we do not have the exception handling code, that is the except block. Since we do not have the exception handling code, we expect that the further lines will not be executed. However, when we execute the program, the program runs and throws unhandled exception that terminates the program abruptly. But since we have enclosed the print statement within the finally block, it didn't bother about the exception and printed the value of the expression passed within the print statement. In Python programming, you may see the try, except and finally blocks stacked as given here. For one try block, you can have multiple except blocks and one finally block as given here. Also, within your program, you can have any number of try, except or finally blocks. That ends this lesson. Thanks for watching our video. Stay tuned and please like, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.